everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a video talking about my pets. If you're not into people that are really obsessed with their own pets, talking about them and saying how great they are, then I suggest that you don't watch this video. Um, I have two pets. I have a dog named Digby and a cat called Darcy. Both have very different stories. Um, recently, this is slightly off topic, but recently I went to the RSPCA and um, I did a couple of like Snapchat videos and things trying to kind of help some of the animals there that have probably been there longer than the others and maybe finding it a bit more difficult to get homes. So I thought that if I did some Snapchat videos and maybe put some stuff on my Instagram that people would sort of like, you know, it would reach some people that maybe wouldn't have been visiting the rescue centre that were looking for a dog and I was hoping that they would touch some people's hearts and hopefully find homes. Um, I'm waiting to be updated on that but um, just going to rescue centres, you know, it's really eye-opening. I don't know if you guys have ever been before, maybe you have a long time ago when you were younger or maybe you're just, you just don't want to go because you know that you're going to give in and get an animal and you're not ready to, to have one, which I think is a good thing. I think if you're not ready then definitely there's no point in going because you will probably end up feeling really sad and wanting to adopt a pet. But if it is something that you have considered and you do think maybe, you know, I would like a pet in my life or I'd like, you know, the extra company or whatever, then, or if you have, you know, a job that allows you to look after a dog or a cat, then I would definitely suggest going to your local rescue centre because, you know, especially this time of year, I think it's, it's really, it's really sad and, you know, you see these pets that are just so confused, they don't understand why they're there, you know, maybe their owners died or maybe their owners have got divorced and can't look after them anymore, maybe they just don't want them. Um, and you can just see in their eyes that they're just like so confused as to why they're there. So yeah, I basically just want to use this video to promote um, pet adoption, um, I'm very against buying pets from shops. I also have recently become quite against breeding, uh, which is slightly controversial as I know it's a big thing and I know that a lot of people are really into kind of pedigree dogs and whatever um, pets, but I've kind of recently found out some information about it and I'm not sure it's for me, I'm not sure what I think about the whole thing. Um, but I'll get a bit more into that later. So for now I'm just going to introduce you to my dog, Digby. So this is my baby boy. Hi. This is Digby. He absolutely loves being on camera um, and he, he's actually just like the biggest poser of life. Um, but he was actually a bit sick today so my bed you might notice hasn't got any duvet or um, anything on it because he threw up. He had a very horrible time didn't you Baba? Um, so I put that in the wash and it's going to the dry cleaners but luckily my bedding is synthetic because I'm against down and um, it's really easy to wash so I can just put it in the washing machine but unfortunately the throw can't be put in the washing machine. Ow! You're having a little chew. So Digby is very special, he's like my soulmate um, and he has an interesting story actually. It's um, again a slightly controversial one. Um, I got him when I was 21, 22 and I got him from Harrods which a lot of you, I can tell, will be shaking your heads and being like, what the hell were you thinking? You know, that's just like against everything that you should be fighting for or believe in. And you're right, it was probably the wrong thing to do. And I definitely disagree with getting dogs or cats or whatever, pets from shops. Um, it's a really screwed up industry. And if you know anything about puppy farming, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, I used to go to Harrods all the time to do like, basically I was a shopaholic and I used to go there the whole time and just like go shopping but when I was there I couldn't resist going up to the pet kingdom and checking out the pets because I just felt so sorry for them and I just wanted to like check in on them and see that they were okay and like obviously just like stare at how cute they were which is completely the wrong thing to do um, but I was only, you know, 22 and I didn't really know much about the industry I didn't understand how cool it was although I knew there was something really wrong about it at the time and like when I first went there, and when I first went there I saw Digby and he was just like the cutest thing of life and he was one of five and he had four sisters and 
you know, I just remember thinking, oh my god, that dog is so cute, but I just, I can't get a dog right now, like, it's, it's something that I definitely want for the future, but I knew that I was living in a two-bedroom flat, and it didn't have a garden, no outside space, and I was living with a friend at the time, and he, you know, I didn't know what he'd think about me getting a dog, and it was just something that I was like, you know what, I just can't do this right now, because it's really irresponsible. Anyway, um, the weeks went by and every week I'd go up and I'd see Digby there and like all his sisters got rehomed and he would be put with a new litter and then you know a few weeks would go by and that litter would be rehomed and he'd still be there with this, you know, these pugs or miniature dachshunds and I was like why is that one puppy not getting rehomed, that's really sad and um, I actually spoke to the girls that worked there and I said you know what's going on with this puppy, like is he reserved or you know, what's, why is he, because I looked at his age and it said he was five months and I was like, that's a really long time to be in a shop and that's really, really upsetting. Um, but they told me that he had been reduced in price and um, that he hadn't found a home and that they were struggling to rehome him and they were like, do you want to, do you want to meet him? Like, do you want to, do you want a dog? And obviously, you know, I didn't, I'd already made that decision that I, I wasn't ready, but um I kind of was like I couldn't resist like meeting him and they took me back to this like pen area where you get to meet the uh, dogs and he came out and he was like barking and yapping and like just like a little crazy ball of fluff and I was like um hello and he literally just like ran straight past me didn't even care that I was there which really offended me because I like to think of myself as like an animal person I like to think that animals like are, are drawn to me and that like no matter what they are like we'll have a connection and we didn't have a connection, there was, there was no connection there. Um, but then they got the girl that looks after him to come out and, and kind of like calm him down. And she came out and he was like obsessed with her, he was like licking her and jumping all over her and just like wouldn't leave her alone. And I was like, you know what, maybe he's like one of those dogs that's just really loyal to like one person because some dogs are like that, some dogs love everyone and some dogs just like have a few people that they love. And I thought that's really cute and that's really special. And you know what, I'm going to get him because I want him to be my best friend and actually I don't want to wait and see what's going to end up happening to him if he just doesn't get rehomed, you know, what will they do? And it must be, you know, doing serious mental damage for him to be growing up in this shop window for like his whole life. And I know that the first few months are like the most important as well. So yeah, the next day I take him home. They did a thorough interview of me, um, and luckily I was actually buying a new place that had outside space, so it all worked out quite well. Um, but yeah, they did a thorough interview, and I think they were probably quite happy to, to get him off their hands, because, you know, they probably felt bad too. But yeah, he came home, and I was living with a guy called Stevie, who you might know from the show that I was on, um, Stevie Johnson, and he was like, what are you doing? Like, you just got a dog, this is crazy. And I was like, I know, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was seriously hard, like, getting a puppy is one of the hardest things they've ever done, like, they literally throw up, diarrhea everywhere the whole time, like, my, the cream carpets, I mean, they weren't my carpets, but it was a rental property and it was just, like, diarrhea everywhere, and, like, you just pick up bugs the whole time, and just constantly, like, you know, having to clean up shit, basically, um, and... I did sometimes get really overwhelmed because obviously I had work, luckily I could bring him to work, I could bring him to filming, I could bring him to most meetings that I had and photo shoots and things, but um, it was still super stressful because there were times when I couldn't bring him, I had to get someone to look after him and it's just like money and just you worry about them when you're not with them and it is like having a child. Um, so I would say advice to anyone who is thinking about getting a puppy, like you need to seriously, firstly, be able to look after them, like have the time to look after them because it's a lot of time, it's like, it is like having a child, they can't look after themselves, they can't be left alone for more than like two hours. Um, and also make sure that you know someone that is able to look after them if you like need to go away or if you have, you know, a work trip or something, you want to know that you have someone that you can rely on that will look after them for you, because if you don't, it's just, like, the most stressful thing, and I really don't like kennels. Um, so yeah, that's Digby, and, um, he is just, like, I mean, he took a while to train, because he had picked up some really bad habits from being in the shop, 
and he's not very friendly like he really doesn't like people which we kind of sometimes have in common um he's just like really wary of strangers and like doesn't really trust people although the occasional person he'll just like immediately immediately love and i'm like okay I need to be friends with this person because I really trust his instincts. Um, but most of the time he will just like nip at people. He never bites, but he'll like go or whatever. And you look at him and you just think he's so cute. And I know that kids like in the street will just be like, oh my God, like that puppy, mummy, mummy. And I see them and I'm like, oh my God, please don't come near me. Because I have to basically be like, you can't touch my dog. And that probably looks like I'm just being rude or whatever, but I'm doing it for their sake. Um, but he's getting friendlier, you know, he's doing, he's doing well, and, um, bye! Come here! We really are just, like, the best of friends, and, you know, look at him. He's so special, like, we just, like, have this bond that I've never had with any other animal, and I've had so many pets in my life, I grew up with animals my whole life, and, like, Digby is just, like, my soulmate and the love of my life. Um, and he's just like, we just get each other. I always know what he's thinking, he always knows what I'm thinking, he knows when I'm sad, I know when he's sad. Like, it's just, it's a really, it's a really good relationship. Um, dogs are just the best. So my other boy is Darcy and he is a rescue cat from Battersea. After my experience with Digby, I learned a lot about puppy farming and how the whole sort of shop industry for buying pets is just really bad and you just don't know where those puppies are coming from. It's a really corrupt industry and it basically research it. I, I want to do another video about this because it is, it is close to my heart but um, the puppies are basically farmed in masses, all these cute breeds that everyone wants and the mothers are just made to have litter after litter after litter and they're just like brought up in their own filth effectively in these huge warehouses and a lot of them get illnesses and you know the mums are treated really badly and um, they live in cages their whole lives it's really really horrendous um, and it's it's a really big money-making business because people know that everyone wants like the cutest puppy and they'll spend lots of money to get to get it um, so I really just think rescuing is the way forward I also think that breeding Yes, it is the lesser of the two evils, but I do just think that, you know, if you actually think about it, it's, it's, you know, mother dogs or whatever that are being made to get pregnant over and over and over again, and um, having their puppies taken away over and over and over again, and I just, I just don't know if it's healthy for the dogs, I don't know if it's fair, it makes me feel bad, like, I even now to this day think about, like, Digby, and I'm like, that's so sad that one day he was just, like, taken away from his mum so that he could be someone's pet. Like, that just, that must still be quite a traumatic thing for them. Like, you just think about it, it must be. Like, in the wild, that wouldn't happen. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about Darcy now. Darcy I got from Battersea uh, Cats and Dogs Home, and he was a kitten at the time when I rescued him. And moving forward, I would always rescue my animals, because if you think about it, there's so many rescue animals out there that don't have homes and they get put down every year because they're not rehomed or no one wants them or you know they're just taking up space and that's a really really sad sad thing when you know if breeding becomes less and puppy farming becomes less surely that's a good thing if people start you know rescuing instead um, whereas if everyone starts you know taking puppies from shops and um, breeders then unfortunately all these dogs what are they going to do? They'll have no homes to go to. So, yeah, or dogs and cats, or any animal, really. So I, I um, rescued Darcy, and um, basically I wanted to have, like, a friend for Digby, and in my, like, dreams, I was always like, oh, Digby and Darcy are going to be besties, and, like, it's going to be so cute. And, um, you know, it was pretty, it wasn't that easy. Like, they didn't really like each other straight away. And what I would say to anyone else that's, rec that's wanting to get a dog and a cat and have them like be besties, it's it's quite unrealistic at first. It depends like how you do it, but you have to be patient with it. You can't just force them to be friends because they just won't. It's not in their instinct. Um, can you fuck off? <laughs> you just ruined my trail. You're such a dick. Can you get Darcy actually? Uh -huh. I thought you were Darcy. 
So yeah, what I would recommend is that you do your research, definitely introduce them slowly because they're never going to be best friends straight away, it's just not realistic and you know, if a dog or a cat has a new cre you know, creature coming into their territory, they're automatically going to be territorial. Um, so what I did, and I, don't, I can't say this will work for everyone, so I would say don't try this at home but it might work for you so maybe do try it, um, but Digby was obviously the first born, so he was there originally and oh my god he's just so cute I have to put him in this video because he's just sitting here um so he was the firstborn and um he really did not like Darcy he was growling at him non-stop and he just wasn't really into it so I got this baby gate fitted in the corridor and um I used to feed them next to each other so that they associated each other with like a good feeling because obviously they love food and they'd kind of just like got used to each other and after two weeks um, I introduced them and um, Digby was quite scared secretly weren't you? yeah, you weren't sure um, and Darcy was really like bold and like was play fighting with Digby and eating his ear and stuff and <laughs> Digby's life has never been the same since has it? no no um, stop it because I've got makeup on um, so yeah, they eventually became friends and they do play fight a lot and sometimes they bully each other and like, you know, it's never going to be happy families 24-7 but they do love each other and they get excited when they've been apart from each other or like, if one of them, you know, if Digby goes out for a walk and Darcy's back at home, well, Darcy will be at the door waiting for him when we get back and he'll be like so excited to see him and like, they are protective of each other, aren't you? One of the dogs come round, you don't like anyone bullying Darcy. It's not fair. You protect him. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go and get Darcy so you guys can meet him. He's not the friendliest, I'm just warning you. But um, it'd be nice for you guys to, to meet him. He's like very untrusting of people and he's just, his personality is very timid. Um, he's always been like that since I first had him and um, you know, he's really warming up slowly but surely. So this is Darcy. He's very gorgeous. He's just been having a nap, so he's not sure about this. I'm gonna let him sit down. Um, but yeah, he's not he's not like overly friendly. Like I've always had cats that you could just like pick up and they would literally fall asleep in your arms or like would just like sleep next to you. But he's just he's he's very timid. Um, his personality is is that of a very untrusting being, and he constantly thinks that like you know, someone's coming to get him or whatever. He's in his own little movie basically, like 24-7 where it's like dramas around the corner and like something's gonna happen. It's like, his life really isn't that interesting but, you know, if I open the oven it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. And it's like, you know, he's just, he's very dramatic. Um, which I kind of love because he's just really entertaining and um, quite special. Look at him. Hey, gorgeous. They're both so gorgeous. Um, and when I rescued him, I know some people are probably thinking, well, you got like a really pretty cat. I didn't actually know what I was going to get. I just said, you know, I'll get a boy out of one of the litters. And it happened to be a grey tabby. Um, and he's just, he's unique in his own way. And I wouldn't say that we're as close as Digby and I because he's not as affectionate. But he is just so special and he really is just like a part of my family. Let's just like show you. Um and I wouldn't I wouldn't change him for the world. Like him and Digby's relationship is just so cute and like I know that he's only two years old and he'll grow up and he'll become more friendly. Like every now and then he'll sit on my chest and just like, you know, purr and like knit at my jumper. They they kind of, they're very independent creatures, they look after themselves, um, they have their own litter tray which they, they, you know, they're really easy to toilet train and um, they're definitely a lot more affectionate than some people might think, like some people think that cats are like evil but they're really not, um, they're just really, I don't know, they're just really different to dogs but still super, super cute. So yeah, I would recommend if you were thinking about rescuing a cat then definitely, or if you're thinking about getting a cat then definitely rescue them. One, I know that a lot of cats in rescue centres are a little bit older 
and I don't think that's a bad thing, I think it's kind of cute, like, you know, they're already trained and sometimes they're a lot more friendly because cats that have been in a home or whatever or been with someone for their whole lives just have that affectionate side, whereas a kitten is a little bit more crazy, like, kittens, you know, they're nuts, they do just rip everything and, and climb up everything and, you know, they just, they're quite high maintenance. Um, so yeah, that's a summary of my pets and I hope you enjoyed meeting them today. Um, they really are the love of my life and I hope that I've inspired you guys to maybe rescue um, moving forward. Um, do re research puppy farming and rescue centres and things like that because I do think that people think, oh, you know, rescue centres, it's all the damaged dogs or the damaged cats that no one wants, but it's just not the case. You know, so many of them are just so adorable and I do think that there's a personality for everyone and everyone's got a different taste and if you really go in there and you hang out with them and you get to know them and you really just play with them, you can find a connection. It might not be the same connection as someone else, but um, it's not all about what they look like and how cute they are and I genuinely just think that like all animals are cute. Um, but. You know, Eva, I, th I actually think the ugliest ones are the cutest, but um, it's all about their personalities. And yeah, really just take the time to, to do your research uh, before you get an animal, and if you do, rescue. Good time. Darcy's being all friendly. Yeah, he's just getting friendlier and friendlier by the day. It takes time with cats, for sure. So yeah. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, um, and if you have want any advice about getting a pet, you know, I like to think of myself as a mini expert, I have done a lot of research, and I have had a lot of pets over the, well, over my, the course of my lifetime, so let me know if you have any questions, um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, have a good week.